When it comes to fertility, you know NPK. Okay, what's the third one? Well, I kind of hate that it's the third one, but it's potassium. I'm not saying nitrogen isn't important, phosphorus isn't important, but for our farm, our biggest yield limiting factor 10, 15, 20 years ago, heck, even five years ago, it was probably potassium. So we've talked an awful lot here over the last few years on Ag PhD about, you know what, it's not just parts per million. You gotta have your potassium balanced in the soil, so look at your base saturation test. We wanna see that number at least 4%, at least 4% K. So a lot of people have said, okay, first of all, why do I need potassium? Second, how do I get to the 4%? What's the math behind that? We're gonna talk about those things today. All right, clearly we need a lot of potassium in our crop. It's a, a nutrient that we need in large quantities. You can go to the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app. It's a free download for your smartphone or your tablet and type in your crop and your yield goal. You'll see that for some crops, we need hundreds of pounds per year that we've got to pull up out of the ground in order to have a successful crop. Now you may be looking at corn and you say, well, I'm not removing that much. That's not my grain removal. No, it's not. But you do need quite a bit of potassium for your stalks. And if you want to have good stock quality all the way through harvest, you've got to have lots of potassium out there. Otherwise, you're going to start to see some lodging. You're going to see some plant cannibalization much earlier in the season. And it's just going to lead to poor yield and poor performance. And the other thing is poor grain quality. When you start thinking about test weight and just the overall kernel, how healthy is that? What's it going to look like for fines and everything else at harvest? Hey, if you've got great potassium levels in that plant, you're going to have better grain quality in addition to better yields, in addition to better stocks, in addition to fewer diseases in that plant. Potassium is ultra critical. Soils have a negative charge. We talk about this often when we're discussing soils. So they've got all these negative charges on the soil particles. Well, what do negative charges attract? Positively charged nutrients like potassium. When potassium is in a small percentage of those negative charge sites on the soil particles, well, you're not gonna be able to find it. Your plant roots will not be able to get enough potassium quickly when you need it for crops, especially for a high demand crop like soybeans that needs a lot of pounds per acre per day of potassium when you're in the reproductive stages. The key to fixing this is increasing your percentage on these binding sites. We look at it on a soil test in the base saturation measurement. If you're below 4% base saturation potassium, that means less than 4% of those binding sites have potassium on them, well, you're just not gonna find enough in time to make the yield that you wanna make. So we'd like to see your base saturation K, 4% up to maybe seven or 8% on the high side to get that ratio right. One of the reasons why this is important in drier areas of the country as well is because if you don't have a lot of moisture, and keep in mind, these nutrients go in with moisture. If you don't have a lot of moisture, well, how are you gonna get enough of that particular nutrient into the crop? You've gotta have a lot of it just flat out in the soil. So we wanna have a good ratio out there. We need to have quite a few parts per million, but again, it's got to be in ratio because if you don't have enough in ratio, then there will be more magnesium, more calcium, more of something else getting into the plant instead of the potassium like you need. So let's just say, for example, you have 200 parts per million and you're at 2% base saturation K. All right, we need to get to 4%. That's pretty easy math. We just need to double the 200 parts per million, get up to 400 parts per million, and I'm not gonna say it's gonna be exact, okay? But that's gonna get you relatively close. So what we usually encourage you to do is if you want to hit it all in one shot and you can afford it, fine. But this is going to be a long-term investment. It's probably not gonna pay off in year one. So if you own the ground, we're super interested in this as a long-term investment. If you're renting the ground, that's where it gets a lot tougher to changing the whole base saturation K thing. In fact, we've had discussions with our landlords to say, look, either we're going to need a long-term contract or if you would pay for the extra potassium we need, we'll pay you more rent every year. But we know we can't recover all that extra potassium in one year. It's gonna take two or three or four years. So we'll, we'll pay it off to you over time. We just don't wanna put all that money out there and then lose the ground. We get questions on the Ag PhD radio show almost every day about, Brian, Darren, help me calculate this out. I'm at one and a half percent base saturation K and I've got 185 parts per million. How do I figure out how I would get it up to 4%? Well, your soil test, I guarantee, is gonna have different numbers on it. But look at your parts per million, look at your percent base saturation K that you're currently at, 
and then figure out what your target is you're trying to go to. Regardless of what any of these numbers are, here's just the general formula. What you want to look at is your current parts per million. Multiply that times 4, divide it by whatever your current base saturation is. Let's say it's 1.5. Okay, so you'd multiply it times 4 divided by 1.5. All right, so that tells you where you need to go in total, the total parts per million you need to get to. Now subtract off the parts per million you currently have, Okay, that tells you, all right, this is what I need to apply for parts per million. If we're talking pounds per acre, you need to just take a six inch soil test parts per million times two. That'll give you pounds per acre, and that's how much actual potassium you would need to apply. Again, as Brian said, you don't want to go broke doing this. Do what you can afford, especially on ground that you own and you know you're going to have long term, and step your way into this. It's not a great return on investment year one, but it's something that's going to pay off for many years to come. The other big thing I always tell people is, worst case scenario, let's say you overdid it on potassium. Your potassium is probably not going anywhere. It's probably going to stay in your soil for many years till you use it. So worst case scenario, you can just cut back on potassium in future years and things are going to turn out the same. So I would just really encourage you to take a look at potassium. It's a huge nutrient for all crops. One other thing that will help you get more nutrients into your crop is to control weeds that are pulling nutrients away from the crop. Start by controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how later in the show. <music>